we can further sculpt our sound using Simpler's filter section. The filter section can be found in the bottom left hand corner of the samples tab, or if I toggle over to the controls tab, it fills the entire left hand window here. Filter can be toggled, toggled on or off using this button here. And we begin by selecting our basic filter types. We have a low pass filter, which allows low frequencies to pass and eliminates or reduces high frequencies. The opposite, the high pass filter, eliminates or reduces low frequencies and allows high frequencies to pass. A band pass filter, which allows only a narrow center band of frequencies to pass and eliminates or reduces low and high frequencies. A notch filter, which allows low frequencies high and high frequencies to pass, but removes a center band of frequencies. Or the special morph filter, which you'll notice pops up a morph tab or dial. And if I sweep this over and sweep through, you can see it morphs through all of our filter types, starting with low, band, high pass, into notch, and back to low pass. So this has some interesting sound design capabilities. If we switch back to a low pass and set our cutoff frequency, which is the frequency at which the filter begins to have effect to 500 Hertz, we can then look at the 12 versus the 24 decibel cutoff slope. So the 12 and the 24 stands for how steep of a cutoff slope do we have on our filter. At 12 decibels, it means for every octave we go up from the cutoff filters, uh, from the cutoff frequency, we reduce that octave by 12 decibels. So if our cutoff frequency is set to 500 hertz, the next octave up would be 1,000. You take 500 multiplied by 2, you get 1,000. That means that 1,000 hertz would be 12 decibels quieter than 500 hertz. We then multiply it by uh, 4 to get the next octave up from 500. That octave would be reduced by 24 decibels. The next octave up, another 12 decibels quieter quieter and so on and so forth. If we switch to 24, now you can see we've got a graphically steeper slope there, which means that the octave up and every octave we go up from 500 hertz will re be reduced by 24 decibels. So in this case, rather than having reduced 1000 hertz by, 20, by 12 decibels, we'll have reduced it by 24 hertz. So just a much steeper cutoff angle uh, at 24 hertz. So if you're looking for a smoother sound, 12 decibels more aggressive reduction of frequencies, 24 decibels. So we've already seen what the filter cutoff frequency does. It sets at which point the filter starts to take effect, and this depends upon which filter, which filter shape we have selected. Then the resonance provides a boost at that cutoff point, giving us a little bit more focus or causing that frequency cutoff point to jump out of the sound a little bit more. And we can really hear this if I switch back to a low pass filter and start to sweep this around. You'll notice this is a really identifiable sound. If I add some resonance to it, and sweep that around, add a little bit of delay to that, and we get a killer sound. From there, we move into whether or not we want to provide or switch to an analog modeled circuit, which is something new in Ableton Live 9.5. By default, it's set to clean, but I can select from any of these other models, each of them modeled after their own synthesizer or filter circuit. So if I switch to the PRD, I can provide or I can push a little bit of drive, which is turning up the volume on the um, input signal into my filter, which is going to cause it to distort a little bit and give me an even fatter sound. And I'll have to watch my volume levels on this. So I'm going to pull down the volume output of Simpler a little bit here before I start driving this. Let's bring down the resonance a little bit. And sweep this up. Sometimes this provides a really subtle effect, other times it gets really intense, but you should always watch the output of uh, Simpler. You don't ever want to peek out, especially in the digital world. This can be a, a huge problem. 
So that's the basics of the filter. We can influence how much the velocity of the incoming note uh, affects the filter frequency's cutoff, either uh, up to 100% or 0%. So the harder the note I play, the higher the filter frequency cutoff would be, um, or no influence whatsoever. Then by default, it's automatically set to have key influencing the filter's cutoff frequency, which means the lower the note I play, the more that filter cutoff frequency is going to be um, pulled down. It won't ever be represented graphically, but we'll hear it sonically. And then the higher the note I play, we'll hear that opening up more and more and more. And this is to allow for frequencies or fundamental pitches that we might be sending in that could be above our filter frequencies cutoff, um, cutoff point to actually still sound by gradually shifting that up, uh, that filter frequencies cutoff up in relationship to the MIDI note we play. So the second half of the filter here is that we have an envelope dedicated to manipulating the frequencies cutoff point or the filter frequencies cutoff point. So just like the pitch envelope, we begin by either turning it on or off then setting the amount of influence that it has, either negative or positive, and then using the graphical display here or the numerical values up here to set how much um, or how it behaves over time in relationship to the mini notes. We have attack, decay, sustain, and release. So if I set this up to having maximum amount of influence, and then let's really bump up the resonance there so we can hear this thing sweeping and pull this down then increase that decay time, we'll really hear that sweep through. Let's go with a little bit more resonance. Flip it. You can hear that it starts with that filter closed off almost entirely, then opens it up to that cutoff point. So a lot of sound shaping possibility embedded inside of this little section, starting with selecting a filter type, frequency cutoff point, and resonance to further sculpt or shape our sound, and then analog modeling there to add a little bit of grit or bite to the sound and using the filter's envelope to shape how that might move over time can really start to get some evolving or cool complex sounds coming out of this really simple device.